بل اسلام ربی انہ اضلن کثیر من الناس فمن تبعنی فانہ منی ومن عصانی فانک غفور الرحیم Tomorrow is inshallah one of the most sacred days of the year as it was said in the Friday speech as well that the Prophet ﷺ has said that fast of that day although mustahab not farz or wajib in reward in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is like 10,000 years of fasting and the Prophet ﷺ in a sahih hadith has said that it is forgiveness for the past year and the future year so one past year and one future year sins are forgiven somebody fast that day today inshallah we'll talk about some of the fazail of the haram and particularly haram in makkah عن عباس بن أبي ربيعة المغزومي قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تزال هذه الأمة بخير ما عظموا هذه الحرمة حق تعظيمها فإذا ضيعوا ذلك هلكوا هذا عباس بن أبي ربيعة مخزومي سيد وعيتك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لفرمايا کہ میری امت جب تک اس حرم مقدس کا احترام کرتی رہے گی اور اس کی حرمت و تعظیم کا حق ادا کرے گی خیریت سے رہے گی اور جب اس میں یہ باقی نہ رہے گی برباد ہو جائے گی حضر عباس ابن عبی ربیعہ المخزومی فرحمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said that as long as my umma keeps on fulfilling the regard and the right of reverence and respect of this Balad al-Haram, this Muqaddas place, this sacred place, it will stay with peace. And when it will stop doing that, when that will disappear from this Ummah, then it will start to get destroyed. In the Quran as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared the Ka'batullah itself, Masaba. Masaba means, we should understand, like an anchor, like an anchor. So it is, a masaba for the whole earth for the whole earth as long as the Kaaba is staying there Qiyamat will not come the day of judgment and the destruction those destructions will not start in fact it comes in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if I remember it's in Tirmidhi Sharif that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that the first of the final signs of Qiyamah first of the final not the signs but the happenings of Qiyamah would be that a dark skinned Habshi person will and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi has told the signs about of that person that he would be his look his legs will be he will be bow legged bent legs and small height and he will come and these Habshi people will be creating chaos across the world before right before the Qiyamah will start right before that destruction will start and then that Habshi person will climb over the Kaaba and start to destroy it piece by piece brick by brick and with that the destruction will start the earth will start to shatter earthquakes will start coming and all the construction and all the things will start to come down may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from seeing that time and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our generations on Iman عن عبد الله بن عدي بن حمراء بن حمراء 
قال رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم واقفا على الحز وراتي فقال والله إنك لخير أرض الله وأحب أرض الله إلى الله ولولا أني أخرجت منك ما خرجت عبد الله بن عدي رضي الله عنه سے روایت ہے کہ میں نے رسول اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو دیکھا کہ آپ مکہ مبارکہ میں حزبرہ پر کھڑے تھے ایک ٹیلا اور مکہ شریف سے مخاطب ہو کر فرما رہے تھے کہ خدا کی قسم تو اللہ کی زمین میں سب سے بہتر جگہ ہے اور اللہ کی نگاہ میں سب سے زیادہ محبوب ہے اگر مجھے یہاں سے نکلنے اور ہجرت کرنے پر مجبور نہ کیا جاتا تو میں ہرگز تجھے چھوڑ کے نہ جاتا حضرت عبداللہ بن عدی رضی اللہ عنہ has narrated that I saw the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم that he was standing atop a mound a small mound a small mountain and saying addressing the Makkah thus that by Allah you are the best of place on the earth of Allah and in the eyes of Allah you are the most beloved and had I not been evic- evicted from here and forced to migrate I would have never left you from this <coughs> the ulama agree upon that the best place in this whole wide world is Makkah and specifically the Kaabatullah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the grant us Hajj and Umrah and going there again and again so this house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the history is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created human Adam alayhi salam these angels had come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and very respectfully presented their uh, presented their concern to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told them that this insan, this Adam that I'm going to create is going to have uh, shar and khair within him so he will have the capacity to do good and he will have the capacity to do evil and angels were such a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and are such a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they never disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they do not have the capacity to do any shar, any evil so they said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very respectfully submitted before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are already here and we are a creation that has no chance of committing evil so when you are making this khalifa over the earth your vicegerent, your, uh, your naib, your uh, khalifa over this earth earth they are going to create fasad over the earth and we are already here in nahnu nusabbihu bihamdika wa nuqaddisu lak that we are constantly busy in praising you and chanting your hamd so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them that i know things that you don't know later on when this happened that sayyidina adam alayhi salam was given the specific special qualities that are required to become a true vicegerent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this earth and when the angels realized how mistaken they were they came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a way of finding as a way of repenting as a way of finding forgiveness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they started to circle around the arch of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started to circle around the arch of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying labbaik allahumma labbaik that Allah we are here whatever your command is about us we are here we are present labbaik allahumma labbaik Rabbana ma'aziratan ilayk That Ya Allah we seek forgiveness from you Ma'azirat we use this word in Urdu as well that we, are, we are seeking ma'azirat We are seeking forgiveness Rabbana ma'aziratan ilayk Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk We do astaghfar to you and we return from what we said We take our, take our words back in a way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liked this way Of them circling And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala On the earth When Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam was sent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down The Kaaba with him And the Kaaba was made a station since the beginning of people to come and perform this ibadah. When at the time of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, the whole earth was destroyed and all creation and all human beings were destroyed. Only the Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam remained and his progeny and then all the humanity you know, started again from three of his sons. Ham, Sam and Yafith the historians have written that this Khana Kaaba was physically destroyed 
this Khan Kaaba was also destroyed. Only the remains, only the boundaries remained. But they were also covered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were also covered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decided for Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam to rebuild this Kaaba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this place a total desert. And nobody would even pass by this, this place. Nobody would come to this place. And then Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving him a son and he was old he was old and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still granted him a son and <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after test after test these, these tests we, we've heard about, uh, about Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam that his one of his major tests that comes in history books was that this son and his mother Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to go and put them in a place of desert so Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam when he started he did not know where he was headed he just started in a direction he started the direction that was told to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he kept on walking and walking and walking and whenever they would get off their ride whatever their animal they were traveling Sayyidina Hajra uh, Sayyidina Hajra alayhi salam would ask Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam is this the place is this the place and he would say no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has com commanded me to keep on going so even he did not know where they were going and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him get off at this place Khana Kaaba close to the Khana Kaaba and they were sent they were they were left and Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam started to turn back the, the story the, the details are not the intention here but at that point when the son finally became very hungry and his mother Sayyidina Hajra alayhi salam alayhi salam became very worried and concerned that what is going to happen and in looking for help she started to run from a mound to another mound, Safa and Marwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, her running and the place where her feet were placed, the place where her feet ran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that action and that place, a place where everybody till the day of judgment Muslims will want to go and do the same thing. And if you think about it, Hajj is such kind of a ibadat, that when you are going there, when you are going there, not only are you spending your money, it's not, it's not a, uh, you know, a cheap thing to do. It, it, it requires a lot of money. Plus it requires a lot of effort. Plus everybody when they are going, deep down in their heart, even though in present day, in the past day it was very apparent that it was very hard, people would go thinking that they might not come back but even today as well when you are going to Hajj and that happens keeps on happening every now and then that many people would get killed in in in, in, a, in, a, in a matter of you know a few hours and this this is what Hajj is like so a person spends money many times people save up for it and then go to Hajj knowing deep down their heart that they may die and never come back and that place itself that they are going is not a very beautiful place. Physical beauty is not there. Had Hakim Attar Rahimahullah used to say that there is a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made his house in a desert. And even if there's mountains there, there the, those mountains have not even a single uh, leaf growing over them. Because if mountains are green and lush, the kuffar would go and commit zina there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so keen about his tawheed that he does not want any, any corruption, any admixing of any other intention coming in there. So if the people would have gone to Hajj thinking that they are going to a very beautiful place, they would have stayed less around the Kaaba and more in the mountains, enjoying themselves. So this ibadah, all of it, all of it, from Sa'i to staying in Mina, Muzdalifa, Arafat, all of those things. They have struggle, they have your death facing you, you know, around you, you can feel it. And you spend to go there. And you, with all that, it's not like it's a compulsion that we have to go there. The Ummati of the Prophet 
is dying to go there is is has a longing in their heart to go there this is their ibadah and in this ibadah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from point to point to point shown the importance of what is the value of 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 the people who are beloved in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is the value of the people who sacrifice for for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this mother who was a very patient mother very subservient that her husband said that we are going and we are going i am going to leave you and this this 2 year old boy with you or i think it, it, it was less than 2 years i am going to leave both of you and he is not telling them about anything how they are going to survive where are they going to get food and water from and even him himself is turning away and leaving them in the barren land and this mother is not saying a word as soon as she finds out that this is the command from allah subhanahu wa taala she says fine i am ready to do it i am ready to do it so allah subhanahu wa taala is showing how dearly beloved those people are to allah subhanahu wa taala that sacrifice and given to the command of allah subhanahu wa taala and how allah subhanahu wa taala takes care for them and not only take care of them but through them of the whole humanity because what happened sayyida hajra radhiyallahu anha sayyida hajra when i said what happened he looked at me anyway sayyida hajra radhiyallahu anha uh, alayha salam she ran from mount to mount mount to mount mountain to mount safa to marwa safa to marwa marwa to safa and then she did not find any help and hazrat muhaddisin murrikin have written that when she came back she in a way she came back that when my son is going to pass away i should be with my son i should be with my son because she was sure no help is coming and my son is crying with hunger and thirst and 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 he is not going to get anything so at least i should be there to comfort him when she came back we all know the story that from the foot where where he was you know rubbing his feet sayyidina ismail ala nabiyyina alayhi salatu wassalam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sprang forth a fountain of water and that water is the main water supply of makkah today and almost 400000 people or no 400000 people go there every year for hajj almost and they all drink from it and not over a period of time but in a matter of 3 or 5 4 or 5 days and that water supply does not run out and that water is supplied all over saudi arabia especially to madina munawwara there's so many people drinking from that and that water does not stop that water just does not want to stop it keeps on springing forth never runs out so when are the feet of sayyida hajra alayhi salam where she ran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded the whole ummah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to run exactly like she did second are the feet of sayyidina ibrahim ismail alayhi salam where from which the water sprang forth that has been made the most sacred water for all humanity and when sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam continuing with the story when sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam and sayyida uh, sayyida uh, sayyidina ismail alayhi salam they found water and slowly they grew uh, they stayed there and then a traveling group stopped there because they saw water and they said that there is this pious woman with her small child living in this area so they said that she must be a waliya she must be a pious person close to allah subhanahu wa taala so we will live and serve her and we will gain from her virtues so they established themselves there around that part and then when sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam would come and regularly visit them and then sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam was told by allah subhanahu wa taala uh, to sacrifice his son and that story is there that he was asked he was shown in a dream he got the confirmation the next day the third day he took to uh, took to sacrifice his son and allah subhanahu wa taala then as soon as the test was complete Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala took another sacrifice from him from a lamb sent down sent down a lamb and that lamb was sacrificed and Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam 
and in that ulama say that Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam as he was as he was moving the knife he was he knew fully well he did it on his own on his own son's throat he did not know that the lamb was there because his eyes Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam just before he was going to do it Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam had asked him to cover his eyes so that the natural love of the son would not overpower you and make you give up the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at, at the very moment. So he, his eyes were covered. And when he moved the knife, he did it on his own son's throat. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent Jibreel alayhi salam and had commanded Jibreel alayhi salam that before this knife can cut the throat of that child, go and put this lamb. And some murikhin have written that lamb was that same lamb that was taken up in the skies at the time of Habil and Qabil. If you heard of the story, the first two people who, who, who the, the first killing that happened in the history of humanity, that Qabil and Habil, the two sons of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, they had an argument over who would, who's going to marry a certain woman. And one of them, Qabil, killed Habil because his sacrifice was not accepted. Habil had put a lamb on the mountain and it had been carried, lifted up in the skies by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a sign of acceptance of his sacrifice. So Jibreel alayhi salam was sent down with that lamb. And Hazrat ulama have written, some, some historians have written that to delay Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam as he was moving the knife from the skies Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam had called out Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Listening to this, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam had said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Or part of that, so he had said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam said, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And Sayyidina, uh, uh, Sayyidina um, Ismail alayhi salam said, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. The last part. So this became the takbirat of tashriq that we recite in these days, particularly. Inshallah, we're going to start recite formally from tomorrow's Fajr, but also in these 10 days it is these it is virtuous, it is it carries reward to uh, say these takbirat. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded, so after this test was passed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked, commanded his Khalil Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina alayhi salatu salam to, he directed him to the direction where the actual Khana Kaaba had been and the remains were uncovered and on those same remains Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam erected the Khana Kaaba again. And at that time its shape was a square with a curved, so this is a, so this is an, um, a, a, a rectangle, a square with two bigger sides and then it had a, one side was curved like this. So then after the Prophet ﷺ had been born and he was roughly I think uh, a little before, a year before, if I remember correct, of his getting the first wahi, the Quraysh of the Makkah decided that this house of Allah is in a very, uh, you know, is almost, you know, in a very bad state, very poor shape. So we should gather money to re reestablish it, renovate it. And all of them brought forth their pure money, not any money from any uh, you know interest or dealings or usurping but they brought forth their pure money all of the qabail and they gathered to reconstruct the kaaba in those days when they had when they gathered their money it so happened that a ship came to jeddah the port of jeddah and it came t and, and it, you know it struck the port and got destroyed so the material the, the wooden material of that ship was being sold and Quraysh went and bought that material to build the Kaaba, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bought, brought, uh, you know, constructed the Kaaba. But they ran out of material. As they were building it, they ran out of material. So they left the curved part as is and made the Kaaba in a, uh, in a rectangular shape with two sides uh, longer than the other two. And this was also by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what was going to happen. So the Quraysh, before that, before this, this construction was made, Khana Kaaba was like one door at one side, the other door at the other side. People would enter from one door and exit from the other side. And 
everybody was allowed to come into the kaaba the doors were on the ground just like th- these doors on the ground the doors on the ground they would enter the room worship and stay there and then leave the other side this is the reason why sayyidina ali radhiyallahu an it comes in narration that he was actually born in the house of allah the kaabatullah itself because his mother was waiting there and she went through the process when she was doing ibadat here in the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anyway quraish when they reconstructed the kaaba they raised the doors because they wanted to maintain establish their control over the kaaba so they raised the doors that nobody not anybody can enter and they reduced the number of doors from 2 to 1 which is the today's present situation but the wisdom of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the hikmah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to safeguard the sanctity of khana kaaba as well otherwise in this if, if if today's was the situation then what kind of people would have been going in there and even in in, in that day as well in that time and age as well there was all sorts of people going in and doing all sorts of things nawazubillah even the worst things that you can imagine right inside the house of allah subhanahu wa taala so all of that slowly after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam got control of makka all of that was destroyed the the idols were destroyed and uh, everything became the in, in order but even the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there, there comes a narration where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that i wish that i would reconstruct the kaaba the way it was built by sayyidina ibrahim alaihi salam and include this into the kaaba itself this curved boundary but then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that i don't know there's people who have recently entered islam and these people generally have recently entered islam so if i change the shape of the kaaba and you know basically change the kaaba which is, has been a sacred thing for a very long time these people might might shake in their belief so the to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not do it and that is the way khana kaaba has been and it is a mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that because of that us commoners also get to enter into the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because hatim this is called hatim the curved area it has like a semi circular half wall which is open for general public and people can enter and pray there if they get a chance so it is a mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but in all these ibadat the point that i was trying to mention was that when sayyidina ibrahim alaihi salam was building the kaaba was constructing the kaaba the lower level he constructed but then there was a stone on which allah subhanahu wa taala directed him to stand and that stone would rise up and he would then construct the upper levels of khana kaaba like the uh, the upper part of the wall so that stone has the footprint of sayyidina ibrahim alaihi salam and allah subhanahu wa taala has given that stone such superiority that allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned about it in the quran wa takhidhu min maqam ibrahim musalla that where our ibrahim has stood the the maqam ibrahim maqam means where his feet stood where he where, where his feet were make that part make that place a place of worship a, a, a place of salah musalla and that is also a part of our ibadat that whenever we perform tawaf after we are done with the seven circles of tawaf we have to go and pray at maqam ibrahim the general ruling is that the whole haram is the whole masjid masjid al haram is considered maqam ibrahim but particular importance is given if you go and pray near that and that is that stone itself is a is is something that we like to see and comfort our eyes with the ziyarat of that stone so allah subhanahu wa taala has kept so many lessons in this one chief lesson is one key scheme is that those who sacrifice for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who sacrifice for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who are madly in love with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by that i mean those who do not see the norms those who do not see and go according to what they are seeing because according to what you are seeing it is an absolute heinous act to kill somebody let alone your own son and to leave somebody in the middle of a desert without water and without food any means of survival all of this sayyidina ibrahim alaihi salam did upon the command of allah subhanahu wa taala and did not care one bit about what's going to happen when somebody does that they become not only the friends of allah subhanahu wa taala but allah subhanahu wa taala makes them a source of illumination makes them a source of illumination they become a so they themselves are beloved to allah subhanahu wa taala but they also become sources of guidance to so many others and allah subhanahu wa taala loves them so much 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maintains their heritage throughout the times. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did with Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and we do it for because our Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam did it. We do it, we, we of course it is called Sunnah Ibrahimi, Sunnah the way of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam but for us it is the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. We fulfill the Sunnah of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam even in that we follow the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. The way he did, he did it and the way he showed it to us. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us uh, accepted visits to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hajj, Umrah, going to, to, to visit the grave of the Prophet وسلم, to visit the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and to, uh, to have accepted uh, attendances at the haram al madini sallallahu alayhi wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept those from us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our sacrifice and all our, all our amal. Maghrib uh, kaweh, when is Maghrib? Fifteen? Yeah, fifteen minutes. Could you bring me that black diary? Could you bring me that black diary? Open the top drawer so they get thick black diary. Not this one, but big, big one. So when the time of Hajj comes, our longing to go to the house of the Prophet وسلم, and visit him in Medina also increases. And like I said in the beginning, by spending money nobody can go there. It's not only about spending money, it is, all, it is about uh, so many other things. It is about being ready to give up your life, it is about being ready to uh, face the hardships at least and still long to go there and have that true longing in your heart. Of course, nobody can claim that we have a very true sense of going of the love of the Prophet ﷺ, but a lot of prayers, a lot of longing and then inshallah will also um, all of us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us to the house of Allah, the Ka'batullah and also the Bilad of the Prophet ﷺ. Do you shape or need Allah Musalliana Sayyidina Muhammad Allah Ali was a real man? Zahimu Qadr Zahimu Qadr Huzure Hakusay 